In looking at our congruent triangles posters, we determined that certain sets of criteria were sufficient to establish the fact that pairs of triangles were congruent, while other certain sets of criteria were not. The purpose of this video is to review the criteria and to look at some situations, look at some sets of triangles, and determine whether the, the information is sufficient in order to prove triangles congruent using one of those five sets of criteria. So we made the term determination already that in order to show that two triangles are congruent, we don't necessarily have to show that all three pairs of sides are congruent and all three pairs of angles are congruent. The five methods that we are going to use to prove triangle congruence are the five that we talked about when we did the posters and are going to review in here today. The first one says when three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides in a second triangle, then we can conclude that the two triangles themselves are congruent and we're going to call that SSS for side, side, side. So what this might look like in picture form is we've got three sets of congruent sides. So maybe a first set there, a second set, and lastly a third set. These two triangles, because they have three pairs of congruent sides, would be congruent by side, side, side. So that's the first method that you need to have committed to memory and be on board with and be familiar and comfortable using. The second method says when two sides in the included angle in one triangle are congruent to two sides in the included angle of a second triangle, then the triangles themselves are congruent. If you have a highlighter handy, grab it. I already underlined for you in, that, in the notes the word included. I'm going to take that one step further and I'm going to highlight it because that's ultra uber important. Notice that when we write the little shortcut name for this, the SAS or the side angle side, notice that the angle is directly between the two pairs of sides. It's connecting the two sides. It's touching both sides. When we look at the picture version of how this looks in a picture, we need to have that same exact case scenario. We need to have our angles be in between the two pairs of congruent sides. So if these are our angles, that we have congruent, the sides need to surround those angles or include those angles or touch both of those angles. So one of the pairs of sides might be the ray that makes up one side of the angle and the other pair of sides has to be the ray that makes up the second pair of sides of those angles. So again, that word included is very, very, very important. Notice that in both these pictures, the angle touches both of those sides and that's what it means to be included. So that's the side angle side scenario. The next one is very similar in that it has two pairs of congruent parts and in an included piece. And this one we call angle side angle. This one says when we have two pairs of congruent angles in the included side in one triangle and two uh, congruent angles in the included side in the second triangle, the triangles themselves are congruent. And again, you probably want to take your highlighter and highlight that word included because it's going to be very important. And in this case scenario also, notice that in the name of this, the, the side appears in between the two angles. It connects the two angles. It joins the two angles. So in the picture version of this, our pair of sides that we have congruent has to be in between the two angles. So if this is our pair of congruent sides, our angles have to surround those. So the angles that would be congruent would be the angles at the top of our triangles, and then the angles at the other end of that line segment. So this would be the angle side angle scenario where the pair of sides is in between the pair of congruent angles. The next scenario is a little bit different. This says when two angles in the non-included side are congruent to two angles in the non-included side in the second triangle, the triangles are congruent. Notice that in this uh, scenario, the side is attached to or touching one of the angles, but not attached to or touching the second angle. So as far as what this would look like in our picture, if this is our two triangles and we've got this pair of congruent sides, we'd have to have an angle that touches uh, the side. So perhaps these angles up at the top, then those angles each touch the side. And then a second pair of angles that's not connected to that side, that's not adjacent or not touching. So if I were to go to the other end of the line segment, I'd have that 
that previous case scenario that we talked about, the angle side angle, I don't want that. I want my second pair of angles to not be anywhere near my pair of congruent sides. So my second pair of angles would have to be uh, where I just marked in blue where it's not touching either end of that line segment. So again, it might be worth our while right now to, to review a little bit and pay close attention because both conditions three and four, these two are very, very similar, and that both have two pairs of congruent angles and a pair of congruent sides. So, so the parts that they have are, are very similar, but the order in which they appear in the picture, very different. Angle side angle has the pair of congruent sides in between the pair of congruent angles where angle angle side has the side that touches or adjacent, is adjacent to one of the angles, but not the other. So paying attention to details and specifics is going to be really, really important here. All right, the last case scenario is kind of a special one because it's the only one that deals specifically with a right triangle. This says anytime you have a hypotenuse in one leg of a right triangle congruent to a hypotenuse in the second leg, or the leg of the second right triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. And it says in order to have this case scenario, you have to have a pair of right triangles. So a nice little case or a nice little picture that might illustrate hypotenuse leg would be to have this pair of triangles that are right triangles as indicated by the right angle, to have their hypotenuse is congruent. And really either pair of their legs could be congruent. I might use reflexive property to make that pair of shared sides up the middle congruent to one another. Or I could have the second pair of legs as well. But that's what hypotenuse leg looks like in the picture. I just talked about reflexive property without realizing that we really haven't talked about reflexive property all that much uh, here in this class. So I think I'm going to go ahead and get into the examples and we'll talk a little bit about reflexive property and how you use it to establish triangle congruency. But before I do that, I want to go out there and make sure that I put the reminder out there that you can never ever assume what appears to be in the picture is actually occurring. So in other words, you can't assume segments that appear to be congruent in the picture are actually congruent unless they're marked. You can't assume that angles that appear to be congruent are actually congruent unless they're marked in the picture. You cannot make the assumption that angles that appear to be right angles are actually right angles unless it's marked in the picture. So no assumptions um, based upon what the picture looks like. The picture may or may not be drawn to scale. So that's kind of a first idea. There are, however, some important pieces of information that we are going to use the picture to find. One of those things is what we just did in the pair of triangles up in hypotenuse leg. We can use what's called the reflexive property to look at shared segments and shared angles. For today we're going to be looking primarily at shared segments, but I might say shared parts. And it's probably easier to show you this in a picture than try to explain in words. The second item that we're going to be using the picture for today is vertical angles. Any vertical angles that you see in the picture, you can always go ahead and go on to state that they're congruent for no reason other than the fact that vertical angles are always congruent to each other. So in keeping those things in mind, number one, that we're not going to make any assumptions. Number two, that we can use the picture to find shared parts and vertical angles. Let's go ahead and take a look at these examples and see if we can determine whether or not the two triangles are congruent using one of our five methods. So in this first picture here, we've got this pair of triangles with the two sets of congruent angles. Notice that what we're trying to do or what we're trying to establish is whether the triangle up on the top, the purple one, is congruent to the triangle on the bottom, which I just made blue. Well, notice that this pair of tri triangles has side JL in common. Because it's a common side or a shared part, I'm going to mark that in the picture with an X. Now, it's not possible for segment JL to be 5 centimeters in the purple triangle, but 15 centimeters in the blue triangle. It's the same line segment, and as such, it has to have the same measure in each triangle, making those two segments congruent to each other. So in looking at this picture, I'm seeing the angle side angle scenario emerge. We've got angles at either end of the line segments, the line segments that are in between or joining those two angles together. That's a perfect case for angle side angle. In the second picture, again, we've got that shared segment up the middle, which I'm going to mark as an X, 
it has to be the same measure in the triangle on the top as it is on the bottom because it's the same piece. So these two triangles now, because they have three pairs of congruent sides, are going to be congruent by side, side, side. Moving on to the next page, we've got two pairs of congruent sides and no other pairs of congruent parts. But we can conclude from the picture that these vertical angles at point A have to be congruent to one another. So in looking at this picture, these triangles are congruent by side angle side. In looking at the next picture, what we've got going on in this scenario are three pairs of congruent angles. So we've actually got angle, angle, angle. And as we saw with the congruent triangles posters, angle, angle, angle does not make congruent triangles. Since each and every one of these five choices up here involve in some way, shape, or form a pair of congruent sides, and we don't have a pair of congruent sides, I have to go ahead and say we're not able to determine whether these two triangles are congruent or not. In number five, the right angles in the picture automatically lead me to think, well, maybe this is going to be hypotenuse leg. But be careful, because right angles don't always use hypotenuse leg. But in looking at this picture, AB would be the hypotenuse in the triangle on the right. Sorry, left. BC would be the hypotenuse in the triangle on the right. BD is indeed a pair of congruent legs. And these triangles are congruent by hypotenuse leg. In number six, I look at that and I say to myself, well, hypotenuse leg worked really well for me in the previous example. Maybe it will do so as well for me here. But if I look at this picture, what's different is that while I do have a pair of congruent hypotenuses, I don't have a pair of congruent legs. But what I can mark in that picture is that pair of vertical angles. And looking at this now, my green sides touch the purple angle, but not the right angle. So I've got that pair of angles and I've got a pair of sides that touches one of the angles but not the other, that's my angle, angle, side scenario. And number seven is exactly the same as six, and while we had fun doing that one, I'm going to say that once was definitely enough. At this point, I don't have any practice problems for you to try on your own, but we will try some when you come back to class, just so we can get a little bit more practice um, at figuring out which method can be used to prove triangles congruent. As always, thank you for the gift of your time and watching the video. And if you have questions, now would be a good time to write them down in the margin so that you can remember to ask them the next time that you come back to class.